Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and in this video I'm going to show you how I put the spots on my new Jaguar mask. This is a new pattern for a headdress style mask and you can find it at UltimatePaperMache.com slash Jaguar mask. And if you'd like to see how all the pieces go together, I do have a video on that page too so you can actually see how you know, to cut out all the pieces and tape them together. This one actually goes together pretty fast. I am going to show you how I painted them, but the first thing I have to do is show you what I should have done right after I got the paper mache on there. I should have put some holes in the side of it right right behind where your ear will be so that you'll be able to tie it onto your head. It's very light because it's just made out of cereal box cardboard, but it's still when you're dancing around or moving or doing whatever it is that you're going to do while you're wearing a big cat on your head. <laughs> it is going to be moving around. This would fit an adult male really well. It's a little bit big for me. So when I made one to actually fit my head, I, I printed mine at 95%. See, it's, it's a little bit loose. So what I would need and what I think anybody would need, no matter how well it fits, I think anyone is going to need the straps and they would need to be attached right here. I'm putting this information now at the beginning of the video instead of at the end, which is <laughs> obviously I already painted them, but don't do that. I'm gonna put my hole right here. Uh, it's about maybe an inch and a quarter up away from the edges. I don't want it to be right up against the edges because then that might pull out. So I'm just gonna put it right there. And I'm just gonna use my electric drill. Now, now you can see why I should have done that first. <laughs> because I'm going to have to go back over this and, and repaint that just so that, that hole doesn't show. But it's not going to be that hard. So now let's go ahead and see how I actually painted it. <laughs> so I've got my paper mache on there. I used the brown paper that I get from Amazon.com boxes. You can just use newspaper. It works just as good. I just like it this way because then I can see all the shapes. And now, oh, I also use the wood glue. Now I'm just going to use some gesso. This will seal it up and give me a nice white surface. I'm just going to cover this up entirely with the gesso and then let it dry. Now if you're wondering how I decide if I'm going to use the wood glue or just regular flour and water paste, I do have a, a video about that. The first layer of gesso is all dry now and almost every time I find some areas that are just not quite as smooth as I wanted them to be. So I'm just using some drywall joint compound. So that's what I'm doing now. And I just put on just a paper thin layer uh, over the areas that are just a little bit, you know, not quite as smooth as I want them to be. And I'll let it dry and then I'll uh, run over it with a very lightly damp rag just to smooth it off. I, I don't sand it or anything, just a rag is all you need. So the, the drywall joint compound is dry now. And I'm just going to put another coat of the gesso on the face and then I'm going to paint the back. I'm going to paint the back black. And you could paint spots <laughs> on the back and the cap, which, which would be kind of cool, uh, especially if you're going to be wearing a, a spotted like jumpsuit or something. That would be really, really nice outfit. But I'm not going to because I'm going to cut mine off let me show you how I'm going to do that right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use a very sharp blade after <laughs> after this video is all done. I'm going to cut this off. You saw me in the other video putting everything together. And as soon as this is done, I'm going to take it apart again. And I'm going to leave the back and the, the face, of course. It'll take this off. And then drill a hole right here. And I'm going to hang it up on a nail on the wall. Now I'm going to paint on a base coat of a, a white that has been mellowed out just a little bit with <laughs> this teddy bear brown. This is just a folk art paint that I bought years ago. It's starting to dry out, so I thought I'd use it. You could do the same thing with some yellow ochre and a touch of um, burnt umber, just to you know, just to darken it a little bit. It's almost white, but not quite. I. <laughs> took my Jaguar in front of the computer, sat down, and drew on all the spots. They're not as organized as I thought they would be, so you can be kind of random about it. Uh, you want the stripes along his muzzle where the whiskers are. Those are in stripes. There's some stripes under his eyes and, and some kind of larger spots right above his um, eyebrow bone. 
but the rest of them seem to be pretty random. So I put those on with a pencil. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding just a little bit of the raw sienna in with my regular yellow. And I'm using my kind of old beat up brush here. It's not one of those wispy ones. It's just a, you know, just a, a brush. And it's got very little paint on it. And I'm just trying to add in a little bit more interest, kind of the feeling of having fur marks on there without having to go over with a little brush and make <laughs> hundreds of little fur marks. I don't want to get that carried away. I would if I was giving it away or if I was, you know, trying to sell the, the finished piece, putting it in a fair, you know, that sort of thing. I would, I would definitely go to more trouble. But this way, it, it has a, just a little bit of depth to it. And I think it'll look really nice from a distance, which is the way we usually see a mask like this. Now I know I could do a lot more on the yellow fur, but I can't stand it. I really want to find out how those spots are going to look. I almost covered up these little ones. It's just a little bit of, of the pencil marks left, but I can see it. I mixed up just a little bit of Alizarin Crimson Hue with the the white and yellow that was already mixed up and I accidentally mixed in just a teensy bit of black didn't mean to but my brush wasn't quite clean and it actually turned out to be I think the right color by mistake <laughs> which is pretty cool and to do like a dry brush right over the outside of that where it's kind of fuzzy around the pupil When the paint was dry, I took it outside to the garage and put this stuff on it. I just sprayed it. It doesn't take very long to dry and I really like the finish that it has. It's not real shiny. So now I get to put some shininess on it. I'm going to use some fingernail polish and I'm just going to make those eyes really shiny. So they'll really stand out on stage or on my wall. And now I'm seeing something that wasn't right. There's a dip right here on a real cat's nose. It actually, the black should have dipped down. I'll have to revarnish it because otherwise it won't have the same sheen. Now I'm gonna let that dry. Now I'm just gonna cheat and put that black mark back with the pen. And when I was finishing up this part, I looked at my photographs a little bit better and I noticed that this was wrong too. I had made that just a little bit of black right there and it actually needed to be much thicker. So now the paint is all dry, he got his nose fixed. I did take him back out to the garage. I just kind of covered up his eyes with a piece of cardboard and I re-sprayed it. So uh, the, the shine is exactly the same on all of them except for the eyes and those are really going to stand out and now it's time to put the straps on you saw me put those holes on already <laughs> and hopefully you did it a lot sooner than i did now i'm going to use these shoelaces and that's what i'm going to use for the straps you might want to use elastic or ribbon or something else whatever you want to use and what i'm going to do is um, i you can see that i put a little washer I just happened to have these in my junk drawer and I put the shoelace through the washer and, and, and tied a knot in the end and then because we have that hole in there now and I did repaint it so that you can't actually see it anymore. And obviously I should wa uh, paint that washer as well. I'll do that later and put another one in the other side so we've got those two straps now we get to try it on now i think we would usually want to keep it down lower if you weren't wearing glasses just because it, it makes them look cooler 
Now, if you happen to make a jaguar of your own, please come back to the Daily Sculptures page on my website, and you can upload some photographs on that page so that we can see how your jaguar comes out. I know yours is going to look a whole lot different from mine. Every single one of them will. I painted them pretty fast, as you saw. I didn't put a whole lot of time into it, but... I still think it came out really cool. I really like this guy. So do come back and show it off. If you make one, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.